Is it terrible to be 23 and never have seen a gynecologist? Is it absolutely necessary to get a pap smear? My period pains are really bad. When should I see a doctor? Are contraceptives actually good for us women? Hi guys, welcome back to another edition of the Let's Talk right here on The B Word. Now, if you're new here, my name is Bogang and with me today is a very special guest. Sitting right here is Dr. Mbume Zenda, who is not only a gynecologist, but a new expert responder on the Let's Talk. Meaning that if you ask a question on the platform, she can be one of the people to respond to it, along with other responders across the country. Now today we're doing a bit of a Q&A, Doc, but before we get into it, please introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about you and the work that you do. Hi, Bogan. Hi, guys. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. This is exciting for me. I am Dr. Mbume Zenda. I am an ob and a sexologist. But more importantly, I love all things women's health. So I'm really excited to be part of this series that Lilette is doing. And I look forward to hearing from you, answering questions, and we'll have a total joy. Yes, now we've got a whole lot of questions. So I feel like let's hop right into it. Ready? So Doc, over here we've got some of the most popular questions on the Let's Talk as well as some of the questions that I asked the people on my Instagram to give me. All for you. You ready to go? Let's go. Let's okay, do we're this. Gonna, we're going to start it off light. Our first, <laughs> <laughs> our first question like is... period. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Our first question is, is it terrible to be 23 and never have seen a gynecologist? <laughs> Absolutely not. In fact, so many women literally go through like their 20s and, and, and some women only see a guy when they're actually pregnant. So it's not bad, but it's not advisable. Um, I would always suggest that somebody start seeing their gynae literally as soon as they start their periods. It's not because oh. something is wrong. It's just to make sure that your periods are fine. Um, if somebody's having irregular periods, they can be sorted out. If they've got too much pain, it can be sorted out. Um, and also you start getting into that relationship with your gynae so that you start getting comfortable. It is a vulnerable space. Um, so, so I would definitely advise if you can and you have access, and it doesn't have to be a gynecologist necessarily. It could be a GP, it could be uh, a midwife who does uh, a lot of uh, women's health. Um, so, yeah. Wow, okay, okay. That's, that's good to know because I think I also know a couple of people in the 20s never have been there like, is there something wrong? <laughs> but I've never actually heard like from when you start your period, but you make such a good point in like just getting that relationship and being comfortable and normalizing it. All right, question number two is, should I be concerned if I haven't had my period for 10 plus months and I'm not pregnant, but I am on chronic medication? Okay, so it, it depends on what chronic medication you're on. Um, I mean, you do get, for example, types of contraception that will cause you not to have a period at all. But if it's just medication, other medication that's not necessarily related to, you know, hormonal, um, um, you know, makeup or anything like that, I think it is very concerning, particularly if you had already started with your period. Go and see your doctor and establish what is the problem. Yeah. Speaking of, you did touch on contraceptives a little bit just now. Are contraceptives actually good for us women? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is such a controversial question. I was about to say. Um, I, I always say I'm a doctor for all women, and therefore, for me, it's always important to understand what are the needs of every woman. So, contraception have absolutely a place um, for different reasons for different women. So, I don't think they are good or bad. It depends on what somebody needs. Some people need contraception to regulate their period. Some people need contraception to prevent a pregnancy, an unwanted pregnancy, which can, which can be devastating. Some people need it for their skin. Some people needed to con if they have a heavy bleed for example so it is important to go to your doctor and let it be individualized let's not do this thing of you know girls share everything yeah. like my sister uses this my yes, friend uses this yes. it has to be individualized um, based on your risk factors and just just all your, your yeah risk factors are the main mm. things we look at all right question number four <clears throat> another one <laughs> Now, is it absolutely necessary to get a pap smear? Like, will something tragic happen if I don't get one? It is absolutely 
absolutely necessary for mm. every woman who has started to be sexually active so mm. that is important if you have never been sexually active before not yet okay. but as soon as you start being sexually active it is absolutely imperative because um what we call hpv or the human papilloma virus mm. is very easily transfer uh, transmittable um i mean and and the problem with it is you get the high risk strains which may eventually cause you to have cervical cancer now the, the 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 way it goes is that it can take quite a while to go from just the minor changes precancerous changes all the way to cancer but if you don't go for a pap smear you never know it's a screening test um it shouldn't be painful uh, I, I always appeal to doctors please try and make your patients as comfortable as possible so that it actually opens up that access for your clients to come through and get those pap smears done Mm. Next question is, is it normal to have excessive discharge? Like, it doesn't smell, it's just a lot. What is a lot? <laughs> I mean, you know, one of the things I often say to, 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 to women is that, you know, when you start hitting your mid-40s towards your, 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 you know, your menopause, mm. you will wish for that discharge. The oh. vagina is not meant to be dry. Mm. And because we are cyclical beings, your, your discharge, it changes throughout your cycle. For example, just after your period, it'll have that tinge of like either a brown or a pinkish, uh, uh, light pink uh, color. And then as you move into your ovulation two weeks in, day, around day 15, mm. it will have like that very stretchy see-through snotty kind of uh, uh, you know feel and then just before your periods it will have more of a milky white sometimes if your ph changes quite significantly it actually turns into that like cottage cheese like uh, oh. Oh, <laughs> that cottage cheese like yeah so so it's important for us as women to understand our bodies and the changes that are natural and i love the fact that you mentioned that it does not smell if it doesn't smell mm. it's most likely okay yeah and it does also change i mean there are a lot of things like lifestyle that will contribute to it if you're not drinking enough water that contributes if you're drinking great amounts of water that contributes if you're eating well it contributes um quite significantly so look after your ph look after your PH. Look after your pH. Yes. Okay, our next question is I'm scared to use a tampon. Will it break my virginity? One of my favorite people, um, teachers, literally gave me the best description of how you answer this question. Mm. And it was if you think of a hair scrunchie. Okay. that's what the hymen is literally like a brand new hair scrunchie mm. and so there is always that 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 hole that opening and all the tampon does is when 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 you insert the tampon it just opens slightly and then it recoils again so no tampons don't break your virginity in fact if that opening is closed completely mm. something is not okay and we it, it comes across as a gynecological um, concern where you have a period but it doesn't come out and you know you'll find that within like a couple of months the girl will be brought through to the gynae mm. to have it opened oh wow i'm so glad we actually touched on this one because this is a big myth or you know no yeah guys tampons are amazing and i think it's important to encourage um um parents to give this information to their children so that mm. they have an option yes. i mean a lot of girls kind of avoid doing sports because they're on their period yeah. um, and one of the thing great things about tampons is you can do whatever you can do it gives you that freedom yeah, yeah. how do i know if i smell normal down there oh <laughs> um look i think i think in general you know your body you understand your body and when there is a significant change in your odor particularly if you're already sexually um active because that's one of the cardinal things um you know that 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 will cause a a, a particularly abnormal smell but having said that i think just it's, again, it's important for women to understand it's not supposed to smell like strawberries and, and, and the way that your vagina will smell, again, will change throughout your cycle. Mm. During your periods, just after your periods, it has a slightly stronger, you know, you know, odor. And, and, and if someone is that uncomfortable, just take a shower in the morning and in the afternoon. But it yeah. shouldn't make you feel some type of way as if something is wrong. Next one is... 
oh this one i know a friend of mine actually was talking to me about this yeah my period stops for one or two days and then restarts again why sometimes it's either an underlying hormonal situation it's maybe somebody is is taking um a, a contraception okay. but the other one that is that is also common is what you call a breakthrough bleed where somebody will have like more than one bleed um in in in, in one month uh, mm. you if it's concerning particularly if it's recurring for more than three months mm. just check it out with your doctor if there is anything most of the time it's it's nothing to be concerned about but like i said if it is recurring for more than three months go and see your doctor okay all right and then now we're down to our last quick question for this round yeah. um my period pains are really bad when should i see a doctor <laughs> Um, so you asked a very important question earlier on as uh -huh. to how soon should I see a guy? These are the kind of things that a lot of women go through and very often there's either this idea that, oh no, it's like that in your family or, you know, so we don't go and inquire. It's important to understand as early as possible what is a normal period for you and so any kind of period pains that's debilitating where you can't function that's not okay go and get seen because there may be an underlying issue something like an endometriosis um particularly if it doesn't get better with you know simple things like you know a hot water bottle heat application of heat um a little bit of a painkiller um and it shouldn't be going on for more than like a day or two at most mm, okay well thanks so much doc i feel like we women were so complicated <laughs> But you, you just emphasize how you need to just kind of be in tune with your body. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 We yeah. often just kind of go blase. And, and I'll be the first one to say, even as a medical student, as a doctor, um, I literally only started to understand my own body when I, I got really interested in women's health. Mm. Like just it, the, the average woman, the everyday woman. Yeah. Um, and, and I realized for all these years, I had the science behind me, but I hadn't actually zoomed in to say, how does this play out in real life? And just how different we all are. Mm. Yeah. Okay, well, that's the end of our official Q&A, but I want to do like a quick fire round with you. So sure. <laughs> these next few questions, just as quick as you can, short answers. Let's get into it. Yeah. Okay, ready? Go. All right, number one, can I wear a tampon at night? Yes. Is the sleep with no underwear thing real? I hate the breeze. It is real. Let her breathe. Okay, <laughs> that's right. Let her breathe. <laughs> okay, number four. I can't sleep properly on my period and I can never get comfortable and I'm worried about messing my sheets. Any tips? Take precautions. For example, change the pad or tampon or whatever you use just before you go to bed. Mm -hmm. Also, what helps is use something that you can easily take out. Now, you know, people will think about linen savers and whatever. Not everybody has that, but mm. try and use darker, you know, sheets and things yes. like that. Um, and and at, if you know that you have a heavy bleed, use something mm. that you know will last you throughout the night. Mm -hmm. And also, a person that asked this, we did a video on this. Maxi Night Pad is another product you can try there. <laughs> so I have it linked up somewhere there if you want to check that out. All right, guys, there we have it. Our Q and A with Dr. To Gaini. Honestly, guys, we had so many questions that we couldn't get through in this video. But if you have any more, do go on to the Let's Talk and leave your questions over there. If you want to speak to Dr. Gaini directly, make sure to hashtag your question. Ask Dr. Gaini. She'll get on it. And also, there are a whole lot of other people with periods and responders from across the country who can help you with anything that you want. Otherwise, guys, you know where to find me in the next video. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye! Bye.